Yeah, hi, Shavani. Good morning. Can you hear me? Hello. Uh, yes, correct. Good morning. Uh, okay, it started. <clears throat> yeah, just a second. Uh, oh, what was that? Uh, just a second. Okay. Okay, bye. Yeah. Uh, I saw your homework. Uh, did you do that in MS Word or uh, what was the file? I could not um, uh, save, save and open the file actually, but I saw that in the Gmail itself. Okay. Uh, in the email yeah. view, itself, I saw that and uh, it was good, but a um, couple of points, uh, maybe we will not discuss that right away. Mm -hmm. uh, but when, when we talk about the project implementation methodologies, you will realize, uh, for example, you said uh, the rigid uh, compartmentalization of uh, waterfall is correct, but uh, sprint does not actually, uh, um, I mean, sprint is not a compartment. Actually, there is, there's a lot of overlapping of different functionalities within a sprint. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so you will realize that you will you will get to understand that when we actually discuss uh, the project implementation methodologies uh, today and uh, tomorrow. All right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. On, the, on the whole, it was a good job done. But I'll we will take up your homework once uh, uh, once we discuss agile. Yeah, the second point is very, very uh, apt. So whereas the first point, right, the software development process is divided into different phases, while Agile methodology segregates the project into life cycle into sprints. So actually, what the point which you wrote about waterfall is absolutely right. I mean, it is divided into different phases. Uh, whereas Agile will not segregate. There is, there is a constant uh, uh, overlap between different sprints and different functionalities. Okay. Uh, there, there is there is, the sprints are divided in in I mean the agile project implementation methodology on the whole is divided into different sprints, but there is no segregation as such, right? Okay. There, there is there is overflow. There is there is a constant interaction. There is a constant. Uh, uh, I mean things get uh, overlapped within uh, different sprints. Okay. Right? So. The waterfall model exhibits project mindset and lays its focus strictly on the completion of the project development while Agile has product mindset that focuses on ensuring that the developed product satisfies its end cons consumers customers. and changes yeah. yeah customers and changes its uh, self as the requisite of uh, yeah I mean th this is uh, see both any any project implementation methodology correct so the, the the end goal is to satisfy the customer right to give a product to which which will which will stand up to the expectations of uh, the customer but uh, agile does it better than waterfall there are reasons why agile does it better than waterfall right so when waterfall what happens is the involvement of uh, the customers is very very limited Whereas Agile involves the end customers at every stage of the project, right? Mm -hmm. 
so that, so that is the reason why uh, there is more chance to deliver a product that is more uh, in tune with the expectations of the customers in agile than in water than in water. Water. yeah yeah right yeah, right. yeah. so it's like um so let's get started on the okay i'll just mute myself yeah sure so today what we will uh, talk about is uh, the project methodology concepts uh, what is project methodology i mean you you are i, I know you are uh, not training for a project manager uh, role uh, but still it's important that uh, you understand the project management concepts because um, yesterday we talked about several roles that you will come across in in a project environment, right? So project manager, business analyst, uh, architect, development team, testing team, right? database uh, modeler, database admin, right? So there are a lot of uh, people who you interact with. Uh, out of all these different roles, you will interact very closely with uh, the project manager. In fact your project manager will interact with you very closely because the uh, as as we discussed yesterday the role of the project manager is to to manage the resources right to implement uh, the 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 project goals whatever the, the defined goals are there right uh, within the stipulated timelines and within the stipulated budget right so but, in order to understand yeah um, what does actually resources mean? Does it mean only only uh, when it comes to the uh, the money part, or uh, or even the you know even the team or the selection of the team, and even all even all those things include in the uh, resources? Yeah, when I say budget, it is money. When I say resources, it is uh, uh, it is the people actually. Okay. Okay. In an IT environment, uh, they I mean they call people as resources, right? Oh. We need one resource, we need two resources, we need three resources, something like that. So oh. what is the resource uh, plan? So whenever they refer to resource, it's, uh, it's, it refers, it, it talks about uh, the people who are involved. Okay, got it. Yeah. So, um, so the project manager here, right, he's, he's very much concerned with the timelines. Whenever timelines are involved, he needs to understand what this project is all about. What is that we are trying to implement? What is the amount of effort that is involved? What are the expectations of uh, the clients, right? So for this, the project manager is very much dependent on the business analyst, right? A project manager, I mean, he will get an opportunity to interact with the clients very closely also, but uh, it's the business analyst who actually talks to the clients very, very closely. So. In order to understand what this project is all about, how much, what is the expectations of the customers, how much time it takes to implement this project, right? Because he ultimately he is responsible for managing the budget. He is responsible for uh, managing the resources. How many resources are needed in what department, right? How many developers I need? How many testers I need? Right? How many architects I need? So he has to take a call on that, right? And ultimately, uh, the delivery of the project within the stipulated time, the responsibility lies with the project manager. So in order to come up with a project management plan, right, a project manager is very, very closely dependent on the, on, the, on the business analyst. And not only to develop the project management plan, even during the execution of the project as well, at every stage, he is dependent on the, on the business analyst. For example, if there is a complaint, if they, there is a complaint that uh, the what was delivered is not up to the expectations, or if there is a uh, uh, if, if if there is a, a difference of opinion between the business analyst and the developers, right? So in all these cases, the role of a project manager is very very important. So coming back to the point where I started, why you need to understand what project management is at least because you will be interacting very closely with the, with the project manager number one and a business analyst is involved in every stage of the project management yesterday we talked about STLC correct so your role your role is very very prominent during the elaboration phase right the requirements gathering phase the second phase the first phase is planning 
The second phase is your requirements. Third phase is design, development, testing, deployment, maintenance. Correct? A, a business analyst is involved in every stage. Uh, question yeah. actually. Uh, I, I wanted to ask this as this actually even yesterday too. Okay, I always hear people saying that you know business analyst job is like very easy. Is that true? It's easy and it's difficult. See why why they say people it's easy to understand, it's easy to understand, grab the concepts and uh, it's easy to get into the job. But actually doing the job, there are certain qualities that are, that, that are expected out of a business analyst. Right. So in, 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 I mean, I have one class dedicated to that. What is the skill set that is expected out of a business analyst? Yeah. Right. In a, yeah. So the one of, one of, I mean, the, the couple of qualities that a business analyst need to have is you should be a very, very quick learner. Mm -hmm. For example, if you are a business analyst in Bank of America, you are allocated to a particular project which deals with uh, a particular, uh, for example, screening of customers for credit card allocation. Right, you need to quickly understand how this how this process happens. Okay. Right, and you and and you need to be very very interactive. A business analyst cannot accomplish his or her job without interacting with the business. That is a primary quality, and you you need to be a very very quick learner. Right, mm -hmm. one you have these two qualities. Your job of uh, your job as a business analyst is very very easy. The documentation part is not that difficult. Anybody can do the documentation. the 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 major the major uh, uh, the major thing that you need to accomplish is your understanding of the business process and your understanding of uh, your interaction with the business with the with the clients, and mm -hmm. then your understanding of what their expectations are. Okay. Right? What are the business requirements are? Okay. Right? Yeah. So if, if you if you if you uh, I mean there is a lot of uh, reading that you will have to do. Sometimes what happens is uh, uh, in certain projects um, you will you will have a lot of literature that you need to go through. Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, uh, some companies do not have any documentation at all. Everything is in their brain. So in that case you will have to interact. Your interactive part is more than your uh, reading part, right? Sometimes uh, the project implementation involves upgradation of a system. There is already a system that is working. The, the company wants to go to some other system, replace or upgrade. So in that case, the existing documentation is already there. So you will have to go through the documentation. In any case, my point here is whether you interact with the clients or whether you go through the documentation, your ability to learn fast is very important. Okay. Right? Your ability to articulate is very, very important. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. okay. So you, you, you will, and you will get some time. I mean, uh, no, no. I mean, whenever you you get a job, right? You know mm -hmm. where you, which company you are going into. You know which business, uh, which process uh, you will be associated with. So you can do some groundwork. You will get enough time for that. Okay. Right? Even when you are in a in a client location, you will get enough time. I mean, on, on day one itself, they don't expect you to write a business requirements document, right? So they will give you enough time to settle down and understand the process, interact with the uh, with the with the client folks, right? And then come up with the documentation. And you 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 always have the documents that are written for other projects in the company, so you can take a look at them, how the documents are written, right? You can you can. Uh, actually understand how things uh, work in a particular client place right? and then adapt your your uh, your way of your style of working according to their expectations okay got it okay. right so it's what yeah. what easy and difficult i mean when you master when you i mean some people are naturally very very interactive they uh, i mean uh, they they are very very um, what we call aggressive in their approach so people tend to, I mean, people, those people tend to succeed more as a business analyst. Some people are very, very uh, analytical and critical in their thinking. They have a very good chance of succeeding as business analysts, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I, I do have, I do, the, oh crap, something is wrong with me today. Uh, but uh, I couldn't hear you properly, actually. Your voice is getting cut off. 
can you hear me yeah i can hear you uh, is it okay now no your voice okay. is really really bad actually okay let me step out step out of the room i couldn't hear anything is it is it okay now yeah now it's far better actually okay so that is how uh, a project a project implementation uh, so today we will talk about these two the project hello. management hello yeah. hello yeah your voice is getting cut off like really bad uh, give me a second okay Okay, can you hear me now? Hello. Yeah, can you hear me now? Sarani, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. I'm sorry. I am I muted and I'm like, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yeah, just give me a uh, uh, Can you hear me now? No. There is a lot of disturbance actually. Yeah. Uh, how about now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Now, yeah. Yeah. You want to okay. Stay. Okay. So let's, uh, let's take this. Uh, By the way, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt while explaining no, no, no. project management, but it's just like everyone, like when I decided that, you know, I'm going to do business analysis, it was like, everyone was like, no, don't do it. You know, you don't get money and it's, and it's a very easy job. Just, you know, don't even uh, think about it. And I'm like, I just want to know, like, because since you are a business analyst, you will really understand, you know, what exactly being a business analyst is. And then I need honest opinion. So I thought, okay, I'll just ask you. Yeah, I mean, they, they, it's. Uh, I mean, in terms of money, there is a lot of opportunity to grow as a business analyst. I mean, yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. That's what I. Uh, I mean, when I researched about business analysis, I was like, more than money, it's like you know, you you get exposed to so many different fields. Yeah, so many. That's, that's and, something. Yeah, that's something so important to grow. Uh, and yeah, you get you get to talk to a lot of people. I mean, it's 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 a very interesting job more than yeah. anything else. It's a very interesting job. Exactly, like um, because I am someone who cannot really sit in front of you know system uh, uh, doing coding all the time. You know, I, I am simply not that kind of person. So uh, yeah. when I decided to do this, people were like, "No, what the heck are you even doing? What do you mean by business analyst? No, you don't do that. You don't get money." The first the first thing that people I heard people saying was, "No, you don't get money. Don't do it." No, no, no. I mean, that, that is not true. Actually, in the business analysis job, there is a lot of uh, scope to grow and there is no project which, which can happen without a business analyst in the first place. Right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. And, and, and even, even in the corporates, there are, there are very, very high value projects which involve a lot of money. So in those, in those projects, the role of a business analyst is very, very critical. I mean, all the requirements and uh, the definition of requirements, the estimation of budgets and execution, everything is dependent really on what. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, for, okay, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, for me, at least, you know, because money is not my first priority. It's just that, you know, the job has to be interesting for me. If it's not interesting, I really cannot, you know, work on it. So 
That's the reason there why I chose business analyst. So there is good money as well. I I okay. It's fine. I don't care if you and if you say so you get paid to get forty k. Yeah, it's an exciting career, no, no doubt about it. But and at the same time, there is money as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why why do you think project management methodology is needed? Um, methodology. Yeah, to ensure project success. Yeah. What 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 do you mean by success? How do you measure success? Um. In the terms of end product, I mean, if the end product is, uh, you know, uh, I mean, if the client is happy with the uh, product, then it means that the project is success. Yeah, there are three important criteria to determine success of a project. The most important of them are, is what you have mentioned, the product. Whether mm -hmm. the product is up to the expectations of uh, the clients. So whatever the, the, the requirements they have given, whether the product uh, stands up to their expectations or not. Apart from that, there are two important criteria which determine the success of a uh, project. Timelines, whether the project was implemented within the stipulated timelines. Budget, whether the project was executed within the stipulated budget. And then quality of the product. Right? Of course, quality of the product is, is the most important. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the um, the amount of money that we can spend on a project or uh, the amount of time that we can spend on, on a project is, is is limited we cannot go for unlimited times right so this they, I, have, I have captured some screenshots uh, you can go through these uh, screenshots I mean uh, you don't have to really remember anything uh, but these screenshots are very very thoughtful uh, they are, actually I've uh, drawn this from a research paper so uh, you can go through them and I'll send out this uh, slide deck to you later so the basic objective of a project management methodology you need to remember is it gives a structure right whenever you implement a project through a methodology it could be waterfall it could be RUP it could be agile or it could be scrum it could be anything else Irrespective of whatever the methodology you choose, your project management methodology, implementation methodology is supposed to give you a standard method, guidelines, to make sure that everything is falling in place. Right? That is the basic purpose of uh, project management methodology. Right? So these are the different uh, uh, stages of project implementation. For example, there is a business planning. So uh, the, the business comes up with an idea that they need to implement an IT project, right? And towards the end, uh, there is operations and maintenance. And in between, there are different steps, like conceptualization of a project, definition of requirements, uh, risk identification, baselining, project execution, project closeout. So, so why I gave this diagram to you is, uh, this is the project execution phase and this is the definition phase. So the definition phase is, is, is very important for you as a business analyst. Having said that, most of the business, I mean sometimes the business analyst will get a chance to involve in a project in the, in the planning phase itself. Uh, I, uh, let me tell you my own experience. I worked as a business analyst at uh, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of North, uh, I mean North Carolina and I worked in uh, Oregon also, right? So in, I was recruited for, I mean, I worked there, worked there as a contractor. Um, my project did not uh, get started, uh, didn't get started by the time I joined. I had some time. So for a couple of weeks, I worked with another business analyst. And then I, during those two weeks before the project kick off, uh, I had the opportunity to interact with the project manager, the clients during the planning phase itself. Right? While they are still discussing about the scope of the project, what needs to be accomplished, what is their vision, what is their budget and all. So very rarely, my point here is very rarely a business analyst will also get an opportunity to get involved in the, 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 the planning discussions, not just requirements as well. Your role might be very, very limited in, the, during, in those discussions. You might be just a spectator, but you get to learn a lot of things. When you interact with the clients 
or the project manager during the planning phase itself you 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 get to know the philosophy behind why the project is be, being initiated right that will make your job of uh, gathering requirements asking questions to your clients very very easy right yeah. you, when you understand the reason behind something your job gets uh, uh, your your job of accomplishing the task uh, it, it will get uh, uh, far more easier yeah right and sometimes as a business analyst you will also have an opportunity to interact with the vendors i had this this opportunity as well right so while i was in the same client location there was an analytics tool right um, um, blue cross was trying to uh use yeah i just yeah i mean this question may sound silly but i just want to know what exactly are these vendors i mean what exactly do these people do you know i keep hearing you know vendors 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 all the time and i absolutely have no yeah. idea what exactly these people are who exactly these people are what what do they do actually there there is no silly question i mean every question is valuable since you come from a non it background there is no silly question just stop me whenever you have a question okay Okay. uh so vendors are the guys actually so when when uh, uh, you, you you said you don't have microsoft office correct yeah microsoft office is a product that you that many people use on their computers who is a vendor microsoft company is a vendor there right so you are the you, you are the client you are you are using microsoft's uh, product and microsoft is a vendor there similarly in a corporate language there are But then yeah. the client, okay, so the client and the vendor is the same then. No, no, the client is, for example, if you are working for Bank of America, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a loan loan processing. You are working as a business analyst for a project called implementation of loan processing system, correct? So yeah. in that case, the loan processing system, the application, somebody somebody should. I mean, where does Bank of America get that application from? Okay. from the vendors yeah the base product sometimes sometimes they can develop the entire product from the scratch on their own but most cases there is there is a product that is available in the market there are products have a competing products that are available in the market bank of america will choose will ask the vendors to send quotation to send proposals bank of america will ask these vendors to come over to their office and give presentations on how their product is better than others how their product is supposed to help bank of america streamline their loan processing uh, activity okay. right so these are the these are the guys who who own the product who actually who have the proprietary rights on the product who are the guys okay. these are the guys who actually developed the product okay okay so when so the people who who basically yeah. But the one you know who who build a product from the scratch, right? They are they are the guys who develop the product. They sell this product to several several lines. So, okay. They, they might sell the same product to Bank of America, same product to Wells Fargo. They will the product will be customized according to their own needs. Okay. Okay. Right. So there is a product called SAP SAP, which is a enterprise resource planning product. Okay. So that is yeah. developed by a company called SAP. Okay, yeah, my brother actually work uh, is an I guess that's the right sentence to say is in SAP. Is yeah. SAP something like that's what I can say. Yeah. Yeah, there are there are several uh, several companies across the world which have, which uh, implemented SAP, right? Okay. Who is the vendor here? SAP is the vendor. Okay. So SAP is a is something like something like microsoft correct who are the who these are the guys who actually develop the product they are the proprietors of the product but they can sell the product to different companies for implementation based on there is there is an initial charge there is a maintenance charge there is license there are a lot of things uh, in the selling process right okay okay so if you're working in if you're working in sap it means that you're working for the product for the vendor Yeah, you can all you can work for the vendor as well. For example, SAP is being implemented in Bank of America. You have the opportunity to work on behalf of Bank of America, and you have the opportunity to work on behalf of SAP also. Okay, okay. Then what sometimes, do you mean? 
Sometimes uh, there, is, there, there is another opportunity. For example, SAP is implemented in Bank of America by TCS. Right? You have an opportunity to work on behalf of TCS as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Then what does it mean that you're working on a client side? So you, when, you, when you are working on a client side, what that means is you are working at Bank of America office on behalf of Bank of America. Oh okay. okay okay. So what? Why why do they recruit? Why do they uh, uh, need business analysts? They have people inside Bank of America, but why do they need bank business analysts from outside? Because m most of these guys who are part of Bank of America, they do not have they they at any point of time uh, in companies like Bank of America, there are some fifty to hundred different projects that are running in parallel. So these guys who are part of Bank of America, who actually manage the real business of Bank of America, right? They don't have time to get involved in all these uh, IT projects. If they get involved completely in IT projects, who will manage the actual business? So that is the reason why they recruit business analysts. The expectation here is the business analyst will interact with the business owner or the business manager or the subject matter expert, whoever is there, and then do the rest of the job. Elaborate the requirements, document the requirements, interact with the technical team, make sure the product is developed properly. So all these tasks are, are the expectations of the business analyst, from the business analyst. Right? Okay, you understand that, right? Yes, yes, I did. Okay, so this is another uh, uh, way of representing what is shown in this picture. So what are the different stages and uh, uh, where exactly your SDLC, where exactly your uh, SDLC stages will fit into the overall project execution. So there are certain steps you need to understand uh, which, are, which, <coughs> which are there even before your SDLC starts. And there are certain projects which are there, which will be there even after completion of your SDLC. So your project management methodology is much bigger than your SDLC, right? That is a point here. So you will not be asked any questions on all these, uh, on, on all the stuff that we are discussing here, right? So these are, these are all for your understanding. The, the, I have actually devised the course in such a way that it is useful in a, in a practical sense not in a theoretical sense right so you you might not uh, you might not uh, face these questions on project management and all but definitely you will uh, you will be asked on these things what were what how was your interaction with your project manager right so what are the different stages of the project how was your uh, i mean uh, how do you, how do you manage to get the requirements Right? So these things, when you understand the background of all these things, your job of uh, uh, facing the interview questions as well as your job of functioning as a business analyst will be uh, a bit easier. Otherwise, we can directly get into the concepts of business analyst, uh, which, which again uh, will, will, will give you a very, very narrow view of the job. Right? It's better you get a macro view. Right? So some points to remember. There are certain steps in project management that fall outside the purview of SDLC, right? Like planning, closeout, and all, right? Yeah, a business analyst might not be needed in those stages, but luckily, some some business analysts uh, will get a chance to participate in those stages as well. Uh, why I say lucky is if you get an opportunity to participate in those stages, your job of functioning as a business analyst will get easy. Your uh, the possibility of developing better interactions with your clients is uh, is there, right? When your interaction with your client is better, your job of uh, getting requirements from them becomes easy. Right? So it's it's more after all uh, you are interacting with a human being on on the other side. You need to remember that. So the 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 more uh, interactive you are, the more comfortable they are with you. It, it is the the more easier for you to do your job. So SDLC provides a framework for project execution phase. So project, there, there are certain stages outside the purview of project execution. So as your SDLC gives the steps only for the project execution phase. 
neither bmm project management methodology nor sdlc is intended to provide so this is what you need to remember right so broadly the sdlc steps we know the sdlc steps right planning design uh, definition design development testing execution maintenance right roll out and maintenance uh, so these are the high level steps but internally there there are no hard and fast rules right every every project implementation uh, will have its own uh, rules uh, within the within the scope of uh, the selected project ma management methodology for example when you become a business analyst when you uh, and get an opportunity to be a business analyst in three or four different projects all implemented by agile methodology you will definitely find this uh, uh, you will definitely observe that all the four different projects which are implemented in agile have have implemented agile in four different ways right so project manager or project management uh, team they have the flexibility to tweak the rules sometimes within the purview of the implementation methodology it depends on the client place in some places the documentation is not very very uh, I, mean, i mean they don't go by very hard and fast rules in some places it is very very strict right so it all depends on the client place it all depends on the project manager it all depends on the project management office of the client and all right so we have talked about project baseline what is the project baseline any idea here we talked about project baseline any idea what what a project baseline is stavani you there hi i i forgot that i muted myself uh, yeah that's fine probably uh, probably it's the the resources uh the budget or uh... yeah exactly the initial numbers the initial numbers project management the baseline is the original range original okay. cost original schedule of the product okay of the project right so whenever whenever you start start out something right it's not just about project don't don't i mean let us take very very uh, simple thing for example you wanted to Um, uh, I mean, you are in which place right now? Uh, you are in Delaware, right? No, uh, Charlotte. Yeah, you are you are in Charlotte. For example, for the weekend, you want to go to Raleigh and come back. Mm -hmm. Right, it's, it's about four hours from Charlotte to Raleigh. Right, you want to visit a temple. Yeah, uh, Raleigh. Yeah, it's two yeah, hours. It's just two hours. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so, so you want to go there? Go to the temple and have lunch there and come back. Right. So obviously. when you have this thought in your mind right you you will have to plan so when when can you start after breakfast so you want to uh, take a break in the uh, on the way right you want to plan your lunch there or after lunch you want to go there and come back so there are at, there are, there is there is there are i mean uh, you want to go by car or you want to uh, rent a car or you want to use your friend's car or how many people uh, so there are even for a small two hour trip there are a lot of uh, ifs and buts there are a lot of uh, uh, parameters that are involved right so think about a project that involves millions of dollars right tens of people clients business processes customers right so it 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 involves some certain level of planning so these the whenever whenever a planning is done they start out with uh, uh, something called scope in scope and out of scope they try to draw the scope of the project what is that we are trying to accomplish right what are the business activities that fall within the scope of this project what are the business activities that fall out of scope for this project right based on what we are trying to accomplish what could be the 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 timelines that are needed what could be the resources that we need what could be the total cost right so the initial numbers they are called the baseline numbers and why the baseline numbers are very very important for from a project management perspective is whenever you have a baseline right whenever the project implementation starts there is always a benchmark 
to which you can compare your progress right this was my original cost by i mean at, at, at about half halfway through i have almost spent uh, my entire budget which was my baseline budget so what are the reasons is it a failure to manage budget or is there a genuine cause genuine reason so your your baseline actually gives you a benchmark against which you can compare and you can measure your progress against right so this is again a project as i said before this is again a project management activity not your activity you will not be asked as a business analyst to come up with baseline numbers uh, but definitely project manager will need your help so how will the project uh, project management team come up with these numbers they have to understand what this project is all about they have to understand what are the different activities involved they have to understand what are the in scope items for this project so based on which they they give a better estimate they take inputs from the business analyst they take inputs from the development team they take inputs from the architect right at a high level though requirements are the, are not defined at a high level they take their inputs and then they come up with the baseline numbers right so it's it's if you see there is there is a document I mean, we'll talk about these documents later in detail but there is a document called vision document so these <clears throat> vision documents they 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 have the initial baseline numbers so whenever you join as a business analyst correct in a in a client place so uh, if the project kick off has if the project planning has already been done you can ask for uh, uh, the vision document and all uh, to to refer to so in 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 those documents they will be they will have a clear picture on where what they want to achieve what are the in scope items and right? what is the budget involved right what is the what is the base and budget what is the timeline it's a one year project or uh, 3 million uh, is a budget and all right so it's important uh, how important is this for you as a business analyst it's important because when you when you know the vision your job of uh, accomplishing your requirements in detail becomes easy right sometimes uh, will you be asked to write a vision document no i have never seen a business analyst being asked to write a vision document who will write the vision document is someone from the business the business process owner for example bank of america loan processing system somebody who owns that process he will write the the vision document and that becomes a document of reference for you as a business analyst to come up with requirements documents at a later stage when the project is actually uh being implemented right so the amount of deviation from the original numbers it will give a measure at at every point of time they will the project manager will have to assess if there is a genuine cause genuine reason for this deviation or is it because of mismanagement that this is happening right so that that is that is the importance of baseline so let us <clears throat> talk about these uh, uh, waterfall uh, i think we'll not be able to cover the entire stuff but we'll talk about waterfall so in this in this uh, presentation right so i have um, uh, there are other variants of waterfall you uh, you will not be i mean these are all very obsolete actually these uh, i mean you will never see these uh, uh, variants of waterfall in practice but it is important to to for you to understand that uh, waterfall is on the is on one extreme of uh, the scale whereas agile is on the other extreme in between there are several variants of waterfall there are i mean waterfall has gone through a lot of uh, evolutionary process before uh, agile came into picture so the 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 waterfall implementation methodology is is, is definitely important but the other variants of waterfall like right, they are not important from a practical point of view they are important only from a theoretical perspective so once you understand waterfall um we'll quickly go through the variants of waterfall and then it becomes easy for you to to understand the differences between waterfall and agile in a, in a better way right so as you have written in your homework uh, waterfall methodology is a very 
strictly compartmentalized methodology. So all the different stages of project implementation like planning, requirements gathering, design, implementation, testing, installation, maintenance, there. So all these <coughs> processes happen in a very strictly compartmentalized way. What I mean by, if you observe the, the, the lettering in yellow, there are two words that clearly define waterfall. One is linear, the second one is strictly compartmentalized. Linear, what, what, what I mean by linear here is, the next business, the next process, the next step of project implementation will start only when the previous top is pre previous phase is completely done. What that means is your design will start only when your requirements process is completely done and the requirements is completely signed off. Right? Your development will start only when the design process is completely done. Your testing will start only when your development process is completely done, right? So many times when you are working on a project, when you are working on requirements, you will not even see the develop. Who, you will not even know who the development team is. You will not even know who the testing team will, will be, because they, the project, the, the if the if the project is implemented through waterfall methodology, you don't need development team in the, in the requirement space. Right? It is very, very strictly compartmentalized, very, very strictly linear. Right? So only when, when, when one phase of the project is completed, then, o then only the, the second step or the third step will, will, will get initiated. There is no parallel run. Right? And that is the reason why waterfall is very time consuming compared to agile. There are a lot of processes that run in parallel in Agile. That is where you save a lot of time and money in Agile. Right? And one more uh, point from a business analyst perspective is your involvement of the clients, the people from whom you gather the requirements, their involvement is very, very minimal. Their involvement is there only in the requirement space, in the design, implementation, testing, the, your your um, uh, clients are not directly involved. They think their job is done once their uh, their participation in the requirement space is done, right? So that is the reason why waterfall is 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 considered a failure because when a client is not involved in the design phase, at least to some extent, when a client is not involved in the development and testing phase, at least to some extent, ten percent, twenty percent. There is there is a lot of chance that uh, that the product that is uh, delivered to them at the end of the project might 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 end up giving them some surprises. They might end up uh, saying that oh this is not what we wanted, or oh, this is not how we uh, we we assumed it will be, or oh, we thought this will be different, right? If their involvement was there in <clears throat> throughout the project. Probably the amount of uh, the the surprises they get at the end of the project uh, will be will be minimal, can be minimized, right? So this is one of the greatest drawbacks of uh, uh, waterfall. Involvement of clients is not there throughout the project implementation, right? So uh, here on the right side, right? I haven't uh, written much uh, uh, which which you don't know. Uh, actually, if you have gone through the slide deck yesterday, I have elaborated the same uh, phases here. So what you need to pay attention on this slide is SPSV steps are linear, strictly compartmentalized in waterfall. The next step starts after the completion of the previous step. Right? Most of the strengths and weaknesses of waterfall could be correlated to this feature. So if you remember two different words, one is linear and strictly compartmentalized, all the strengths of waterfall right they revolve around these two points all the weaknesses of waterfall they revolve around these two points linear and strictly compartmentalized right so these are the some of the strengths of waterfall e sorry easy to understand easy to use so why is it easy to understand why is it easy to use
why do you think it is easy to understand and easy to use easy to understand is not the requirements easy to understand is the implementation methodology for example when a project is initiated via waterfall right there is a clear cut definition january february requirements right march design april may june july august development september october testing november december deployment and maintenance there is a there is a clear definition there is no confusion to anybody so by the end of february if you don't get your requirements signed off there is a clear cut definition uh, whether you have succeeded or failed right so it's very easy because there there is there is a clear cut demarcation of what needs to be done and when and at any point of time only one task is being done there is no parallel run so it's it's very easy right milestones are well understood so you know when what happens in a in a project provides structure to the inexperienced team this is very very important sometimes when you are new to the project if you are in waterfall it's easy for you rather than in agile right sets sets requirements why requirements are stable here because if you remember what i said the 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 design and development stages of waterfall will start only when the requirements are completely signed off when the requirements are completely signed off what that means is there is no going back the 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 team has to strictly confine to what the requirements that are the, the requirements that are signed off by the clients so the requirements are stable while in agile there is there is a scope for evolving requirements a right? good for management control planning staffing and tracking so plan Ma management knows i mean what is the stage of the project for example in, in uh, i mean they don't need development team until the month of april they don't need uh, uh, testing team until the month of august right they can they don't have to staff the entire project in the month of january itself correct it's very easy it's very easy to track the progress also works well when requirements could be visualized and defined at the beginning of the project so not every project this is a, this is a point you need to understand as a business analyst business analyst should never have the impression that the clients will have a complete thorough understanding of what they want if they have a complete and thorough understanding of what they want they don't probably they don't need a business analyst right so they have a high level idea on what they want most of the cases it's through interactions between the business analyst and the stakeholders that the requirements actually get evolved right so it's important that you understand the business process and it's important that you as a business analyst question them in in several different ways to to gather the requirements right so if if uh, so the the in in waterfall what actually happens is uh, Uh, since there is a strict timeline to define the requirements and sign off the requirements it's important that the clients know what their requirements are it's important that the clients know what 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 is strictly uh, what is that they, are, they want to accomplish if they don't have that clarity in agile there is a there is a there is a scope for evolving requirements where um they can change the requirements or modify the requirements as the project implementation goes on but in waterfall once you sign off the requirements you cannot go back and you cannot uh, alter the requirements so it's important uh so as a waterfall is successful in projects where uh clients have a reasonably good idea on what they want right and waterfall is also successful in projects in small projects than on large projects because in large projects there is there is a scope for evolve for the requirements to evolve for example a project is implemented being implemented over a period of 5 to 10 years or 4 to 5 years sorry right so there there are a lot of things that change at least there is a possibility for a lot of things to change on the other hand compare that with a project that is being implemented in 3 to 6 months period there is there is little chance for the requirements to change right so waterfall is very suitable when the clients have an idea on what they want a clear idea on what they want 
and small projects right any questions so far no yeah so and the shortcomings also are related to the same quality of agile all requirements but we know must be known upfront which is not easy so the or oh, i mean clarity on what they want in the beginning of the project is a very very rare rare situation deliverables created for each phase are not considered for i mean whenever whenever a deliverable for example when you design and you say it is done and signed off you cannot modify that or when you write requirement and you, when you say it is done you cannot modify that it 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 inhibits kind of flexibility what if some mistake has done, has been done what if uh people have forgotten some requirements what if some requirements have evolved what if the thinking process has evolved right rigid and does not reflect problem solving nature of soft iterations iteration is repetitive nature for example in in agile when we talk about agile i'll i'll explain you this part very clearly there is there is a lot of scope for experimentation there is a lot of scope to go back and correct integration is one big bang at the end this is what we talked about right so when when a client is involved in the requirement <coughs> when a client is involved yeah. yeah is it fine now i guess i guess it's fine now yeah so when when the client gets to see the product at the end there are a lot of surprises there may be a lot of surprises right whereas um, on the other hand but can you explain what is integration is one big bang at the end yeah integration is i mean the integration what integration means here is there whenever an application is being developed there are several smaller parts correct so when when a when all these parts come together and that is delivered to the client at the end in in one go the entire application is presented to the client in one go it's big bang right the small whereas in agile the smaller different parts which form the application they are they are exposed to the client for example loan processing system or when you when you go through loan processing system right when you go through any application there are 10 to 15 different streams there are 10 to 15 different steps so all these 10 to 15 different steps are exposed to the client in waterfall at the end whereas in water in agile so they are involved in the development of all these uh, different streams and different processes there is no big bang approach there is very iterative approach so when 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 a big bang implementation is done when the entire application is exposed to the client and implemented in one go what if something goes wrong right so your chance of correcting the mistake is less right so little opportunity for customers to preview the system until it may be too late sometimes it is too late sometimes uh, uh, one small mistake might uh, require a lot of efforts to correct it might have several dependencies if you correct one thing there are several other things that need to be corrected right so let's stop at this point um, so variants of waterfall tomorrow will cover there are not not many uh, we will cover all these uh, tomorrow and then we'll go to agile right so i'll send you this uh, um this slide deck okay shauni yeah so give me a note on user stories what are user stories okay right so you don't have to spend too much time exploring all this just uh, um 
I mean, whatever the homework I give you, right? Just do it as fun. Just explore a couple of websites, try to understand, put it in your own words, and send it to me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll send you this uh, slide deck. Uh, you don't have to really go through the later part of the presentation. Just go through whatever we have gone, whatever okay. we have discussed in the class. And uh, if you have any questions, just uh, drop me an email. You don't have to remember them until the next class. Just drop me an email. We can just take them up in the next class. All right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. Have a good day. Uh, go ahead. Are you on WhatsApp? Yes. Yeah, I think that would be easy, right, to communicate. Yeah, you can uh, I can send you my WhatsApp number as well. I'll 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 put it in an email. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right then. Have a good day. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.